Good evening, everyone. We want to welcome you uh, to Thomas Row tonight. I mean, we got a lot of guests here tonight. You're either friends or neighbors or fans of Paula and Emma. Thank you so much on their behalf for being here tonight to support this. Uh, this is an album release concert. Been listening to it all week long. I promise you, you want to pick that up before you leave tonight. Uh, but we're, we're glad that you're here to, um, to celebrate this album with uh, Paula and Emma. I'm just going to invite you to sing along, to worship, and uh, enjoy yourself tonight. Let's pray together and we will begin. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you for salvation. We thank you, Lord, that you died on the cross to pay the penalty of our sin. Lord, on the third day, you rose again. And Lord, you're seated at the right hand of the Father now making intercession for us. Thank you for, for music, for song, and for the ministry that Paula has had and, and that now that Emma uh, is having. We pray, Lord, that everything that happens here tonight, may it be a sweet, sweet sound to your ear. In Jesus' name I pray. All right, folks, put your hands together. Welcome Paula and Emma.
much. Wow, it is such a joy and such a privilege to be here tonight with you all. And to be here at our home church, uh, debuting our new album. Thank you so much for coming and sharing in this special evening. It really is a dream come true. Um, for the last couple of years, Emma and I have started um, singing and traveling and leading worship together at some women's conferences and churches and business events. And, and uh, it was, it's been great. And last summer when we came home from a, just a summer tour in New England, um, Emma started praying and asking the Lord just to open up the doors of our ministry. And she even began praying that we could do a worship album together. And we, Rob and I didn't even know she was praying about that. Well, we found out a month later and we were so moved by her faith in that, that we began praying. And one thing led to another, and here we are tonight. So we are excited to celebrate what God has done. We're going to be doing every song off of the album and even sharing a little bit about why we chose the songs and what they mean to us. This next song was one that Emma insisted uh, for the album. And I'm not going to lie, she likes the beat and the groove to it. But it has a great message because it simply talks about that there's nothing our God can't do. He loves to breathe life and renew us and restore us. And he can do anything. There's stories all throughout the Bible. This song talks about one in, in at Second Kings, where these people were burying this man, and these attackers came, so they threw the man into the tomb of Elisha, and the man he, he fell on the bones of Elisha and he came alive and stood up. Can you imagine what those people thought that day? And then in the New Testament, Lazarus was raised from the dead, and then the most ultimate miracle of all, when Jesus rose from the grave. He can do anything. And that is exciting. And that's what this song means to us. Let's rattle. <laughs> Saturday was silent. Surely it was through. Since when has impossible ever stopped you Friday's disappointment Sunday's empty tomb Since when has impossible ever stopped you This is the sound of dry bones rattling This is the praise make a dead man walk again Open the grave, I'm coming out I'm gonna live, gonna live again This is the sound of dry bones rattling Pentecostal fire is stirring something new You're not gonna run out of miracles anytime soon Resurrection
Okay, so that's a little bit of a workout, I'm not gonna lie. And uh, like Pastor said this morning, she's 15 and I'm not. <laughs> so uh, I'm gonna take just a second here and catch my breath. And while, we do, while I do that, I'm just gonna take a second and tell you how I came to know the Lord. I accepted Christ as my savior at a young age. What happened was our next door neighbor died. So I wanted to know what happened to him, where he went and why I would never see him again. So it was explained to me that if there had been a time in his life where he had admitted that he was a sinner and believed that Jesus came and died on the cross to pay for his sin and then confessed his sin and asked the Lord into his life, then he went to heaven. And I knew right then and there that I wanted to know where I was going when I died and that I wanted it to be in heaven with Jesus. So I prayed and I confessed my sin and I asked the Lord into my life. But it wasn't until I was 14 that I really understood that when we accept Jesus into our life, it's not supposed to end there. We're supposed to give our lives back to him and say, God, here's my life. Take it and do whatever you want with it. And I was at a camp that summer and the speaker was talking about living for God and putting him first. And you know, it wasn't like I was out partying or drinking or taking drugs or anything like that, but God wasn't number one. And in his eyes, that's just as bad because he wants us completely sold out to him. So I said, okay, Lord, it's not much. You can take my life and do whatever you want with it. And you know, some people associate being a Christian with all these do's and don'ts and rules and regulations, and you have to give up this and you have to give up that. And you certainly can't have any fun, but I'm here to tell you that I have found it to be just the opposite. God has given me so much more than I could ever give back to him. And it's exciting to be a Christian. Yes, we still have problems just like anybody else, but the difference is we have the Lord Jesus who goes with us every step of the way. And when I think about what he has done for me, it's the least that I can do is to live for him. I'm gonna be sharing my story in a few moments and I'm just so thankful God looked down and saw a little girl who didn't have any hope, who didn't have any future. And he reached down and he rescued me. And after all that he has done for me, it's the least that I can do is to say thank you every single day.
Thank you. So when we were in Nashville doing the album, there were a couple of songs that just really screamed that they needed background singers on and a backup choir. So our producer went ahead and uh, got some studio musicians together and they did this awesome job on the song. So as we were planning this concert, we thought, oh my word, wouldn't that be exciting if we could have a choir on some of these songs? And we just so happened to go to a church that has so much talent here within the four walls. And many of them are my friends and they so graciously agreed to be a part of the concert tonight. So I'm gonna invite them to come up right now and join us for this next song. And while they're coming, we have a couple of people we would like to introduce. Um, first of all, we have friends and family um, that have come in and we are just so grateful. Um, Rob's parents are here and also his sister and, and her family and her daughter and son and their families are here and it just means so much to have you guys here tonight. And um, I'm especially grateful to have my dad here. Um, the last few months he's had some health challenges so we we weren't sure, and, and it just means so much to have him here tonight. So I'm very thankful for that. And then right now, um, I'd like to introduce the band. Um, as we were dreaming about this concert, we thought, man, it'd be fun to have a live band. And so we talked to some of the guys in Nashville that played, and, and it started working out, and here we are. So I'm going to introduce a few of them tonight. Um, first of all, we have Dave Cleveland over here on the guitars. and. Dave is a sought-after studio musician in Nashville, he's, and he's also been on the road with many artists that you would recognize. And he was just here a few weeks ago for the Hymns Project album release concert. So he is not a stranger here, and he's been on some of my albums in the past, and we're just so thankful you would come and be here tonight. And then over here on the keyboard, we have TJ Lawson, and TJ was so wonderful to step in because our keyboard player from Nashville, his son was graduating, so he could not come tonight. So we were like, what are we going to do? Well, TJ came very highly recommended by several different people, and we were so excited. He's just graduating from uh, Liberty with a music, a commercial music degree, and he also just finished a new album and did a debut concert this week himself. So we are very grateful you would be here tonight. Thank you. And then over here on the bass is my dear friend. Gary Eubanks. Gary and I go way back. We were on the Sounds of Liberty together eons ago. I won't say how many years because that will make us both feel really old. <laughs> but Gary is one of those friends that has always supported and cheered us on. And you know in life when you have friends like that, it is so special and means so much. And when he found out we were doing an album, he came to me and said, well, Paula, are you going to do an album debut concert maybe? And I said, well, I don't know. You know, we're just trying to get this thing recorded right now. And he said, well, this is the first one together with your daughter. And I really think, and he kept pushing. And, and then like a week later, he's like, he followed up and he's like, I'm praying about this. You need to do this. And long story short, here we are tonight. And so I just thank you so much, Gary, for believing in us. And last but not least, on the drums here is Scott Williamson. He is, he is one of the very best in Nashville drummers. He has drummed on so many projects. In fact, he was just on Blake Shelton's project. I might throw that in there. And he has produced many albums. He did Point of Grace's first few albums. He's done FFH, Lincoln Brewster. Um, and then somewhere along the line, we were introduced and he somehow agreed to start doing our albums. And he's been producing our albums for 20 years maybe, I don't know, <laughs> more. And so anyway, Emma and I were so excited to do a project with him and that he would be here tonight and his wife Vanessa is here somewhere too and we're so happy she could be here as well. So that's the band and uh, let's have another hand for them. <laughs> and this song we're gonna do, we just love the message because I love the fact that when we come to Jesus, we can come just as we are, with all of our faults, our mistakes, our past, our failures and everything. And his love and his mercy and his grace flow freely to each of us when we turn to him. This goes out to every outcast to the just don't quite fit in Every wrong way runaway rebel 
so ashamed of where you've been this goes out to every searcher trying to fill that empty space well your searching days are over now everything's about to change come on down to the singing <laughs> quite a bit and for me it started 37 years ago I tell people I started when I was two but that's not really true <laughs> um, it was at that camp where I surrendered my life to the Lord that they ended up asking me to stay and do the music and I thought I had died and gone to heaven I was like yes I would love to do that so I did I sang all summer and did concerts and at the end of the summer just chalked it up to a great experience never dreaming what God had in store all of a sudden, the different youth groups that had been coming through started calling me and asking me to come to their area and do a concert. And I remember I was Emma's age thinking, what, what am I going to share in front of a church full of people? But that's what God wanted, somebody who didn't know what to do or even how to do it, but somebody that was willing and available. And he has a plan for all of us. He wants to use all of us in ways that we never dreamed possible. So I ended up traveling um, all throughout high school, and then I came here to Liberty uh, to go to college. And it's also where I met my husband, Rob, and this would be a really good time to introduce Rob because I haven't done so yet. Um, Rob, can you just kind of wave or something? <laughs> so Rob was from Minnesota, and he was here, and I was from Maine. And after we graduated, we got married, and you know, we thought, hey, if we stay here, we don't have to freeze all winter. And so we did. We stayed. We never left. And we absolutely love it here. We love Lynchburg. We love Thomas Road. We love Liberty. We love everything. And so it's been great. Um, we just celebrated 27 years of marriage. And we've been traveling and doing this ministry. And then Emma started traveling with me. So that's been exciting. And then, of course, the pandemic hit. And we all got stuck at home, right? And it was somewhere in the middle of all that that Emma said to me one day, you know, Mom, we don't have to be 
on the road to sing, we can just start singing little songs and, and sharing them on Facebook and different things. And so we did. We started recording these little songs and they were far from perfect. I'll be the first to tell you, sometimes I would cringe when I hit that little post thing. But you know, if you wait till it's perfect, you'll never do it. So we did it and we just prayed that God would use it to just encourage people at a very stressful time. And then somewhere along the line, Emma says to me one day, Mom, this is getting kind of boring. We need to spice it up a little. We need to do music videos. And I'm like, videos? And next thing I knew, she had me climbing up Sharp Top. I'm just lucky to get to the top, let alone sing at the top. In her sparkly heels. I, I did not wear heels yes, on the Well, anyway, and then she had us out at the Peaks of Otter in the snow, and it, and it, it was beautiful, but Rob, our videographer, was like, hurry up and get done with your worship so we can get out of the cold. I mean, just not really conducive for that. But then we would do, we've done beaches. My favorite was up in Maine at a lighthouse and I could go on and on. But one thing we found was that being out and seeing God's creation, we couldn't help but worship him because it points to a creator who loves us, who loves us so much that he puts so much detail around us to show his glory to show his involvement in our lives. So when we picked songs, this song we fell in love with, because it does, it reminds us of God's love in creation and that he's all around us, working in our lives and covering every detail about us. So we're gonna ask Jason and Kaylee if they'll come up and join us for this song. I love having Kaylee up here because she and Emma are similar in age and they're really good friends. And I just love to see young people singing for Jesus. So we're going to share this song with you right now. I see the sun rise in the morning And a million stars at night I hear the birds, they can't stop singing hallelujah I see His goodness when I fall down And His grace that picks me up Every day I can't stop singing hallelujah How can you not see God In every little thing, in every little moment How can you not feel loved? How can you not, how can you not Cause He's in the middle of every little in every little moment, how can you not see God? How can you not? How can you not? I see the sunset and I wonder if He paints it just for me. Nobody else could make a world so beautiful. How could I question His love when it's every?
You know, I think it's really easy to look up here sometimes and see people on the stage and think, well, that's great. That's great that you can be so happy and chirpy and you can talk about the Lord and worshiping him and creation and all the things and you've probably never had a problem and nothing's ever gone wrong. But the truth is we all have struggles. And I believe it's our choice if we want to live defeated lives by the problems we encounter or if we want to overcome these circumstances with God's help. When I was six weeks old, my father was in prison and my mom was very sick. She was bedridden and there was three of us kids. My brother was two and my sister was four. And some people were out on church visitation one day. They were just out randomly choosing houses and neighborhoods and they just happened to stop at my house that day. And when they did, they saw that there was a need. And they said, we realize you don't even know us, but you need some help and we're willing to help out and we could even take care of the baby until you get better. Well, my mom didn't really have a choice at that time. She didn't have any people around her that could help. So she went ahead and let them take me. And so at six weeks old, I went home with this family from the church. And for years I went between both families. My real family, when my dad got out of prison, there was a lot of fighting and drinking and drugs, you name it, it was there. It was a very unhappy home. But this family from the church taught me about God and his love. They're the ones who told me about Jesus. And they're the ones who led me to the Lord when I was young. And they also showed me the difference between a home where God was the center and where there was peace and where there was happiness as compared to my home where there were so many struggles. Then when I was 11, my mom died of cancer. So from that point on, I just stayed with this family from the church because my dad didn't carry their way. In fact, both my brother and sister, when they turned 14, they were kicked out of the house and forced to be on their own. And you know, I share all of this with you for two reasons. First of all, to show you it is only because of God that I'm here today. Had not God sent this family to my house, I would not be here. And you know, they didn't just come and say, hey, we'll pray for you, and hey, when you get better, come on down and visit the church. No, they actually got involved in a very messy situation, and it literally changed the course of my life. But I also share this because I know in a room this size, maybe on the outside everything looks great, you all look so wonderful, but maybe deep down inside things aren't so great. Maybe you're going through some struggles, Maybe your marriage is falling apart, or you've been through a divorce, or you're having health problems, you've lost a loved one. Maybe you're battling depression or addiction. I don't know what your need is tonight, but the answer is Jesus. And the same God that has been so faithful to me will be faithful to you too. We can see stories in the Bible where he took care of his children, where he parted the Red Sea, where he defeated Goliath with David. And he'll do the same for you and he'll do the same for me with whatever we're facing. If we'll just turn to him, trust him, and leave our burdens at his feet, he is a faithful God.
thanks for what you've done for us, God. You are such a good God. And Lord, you're so worthy of our praise. And sometimes we may not have the adequate words and we may feel so unworthy, but I'm so thankful we can just come as we are. We can offer up our praise and know that it is pleasing to you, God. So that's what we want to do tonight, God. We just want to worship you. We want to thank you. We want to praise you. And may this song be the prayer of our hearts tonight. Cause all that I 
have is a hallelujah, hallelujah. And I know it's not much, but I've nothing else fit for a king except for a heart singing hallelujah, hallelujah. I've got one response. I've got just one move. With my arms stretched wide. So come on my soul, oh don't you get shy on me, lift up your song Cause you've got a lion inside of those lungs, get up and praise the Lord So come on my soul, oh don't you get shy on me, lift up your song Cause you've got a lion inside of those Get up and praise the Lord So come on my soul Oh don't you get shy on me Lift up your song Cause you've got Cause all that I have is a hallelujah, hallelujah. You know, I think it's easy to praise the Lord and to worship Him when everything's going great in our lives. But I think the real test is, what are we going to do when things go wrong? Are we still going to praise him? Are we still going to trust him? And are we still going to live for him? Life is hard. And you know, sometimes when we go through one thing, we think, whew, I got through that. I've met my quota. I'm good to go. Smooth sailing now. But that's not always the case. Sometimes life is filled with problems and we can have one right after another and it puts our faith to the test. I know with our family, the last six years have kind of been that way. Um, six years ago, I got a call from the emergency room in Bangor, Maine. They called to tell me that my brother had been in a horrific car accident and wasn't going to make it. I remember getting on the plane that day and I remember thinking, God, I don't know how to do this. I don't know how to say goodbye to somebody I have loved and prayed for my entire life. 
He passed away shortly after I got there, and it was so hard. But God was there, and he carried me through. It wasn't long after that, our brother-in-law was diagnosed with esophageal cancer. And again, our family was faced with another loss. And we were like, God, we need you. This is so hard. It's heartbreaking. And then last summer, the mom that raised me and loved me as her own passed away after a 15-year battle with Alzheimer's. And that probably was one of the hardest things. My dad, my 94-year-old dad, I was, she was the love of his life, and they'd been married for 71 years. And it was so hard. But God was there. And he carried us through. That week I was scheduled to sing in Florida. And I remember thinking, I know the church will understand if I need to cancel because my mom just passed away. But it was almost like the Lord was speaking in my heart saying, Paula, are you still going to worship me? Are you still going to trust me even when it's really, really hard? So I went ahead and I went. And you know what happened? I was the one that was ministered to that weekend because that's what happens. When we worship the Lord, when we put our eyes on Him, it takes our focus off our problems and our pain and it puts it on the one who will give us everything we need for everything that we face in life because that's who He is and that's what He does for His children. But worship also reminds us it reminds us that life here is just temporary. We blink and it's over, but heaven is forever. And when we know Jesus, we will be with him one day and there'll be no more pain. There'll be no more tears. There'll be no more death. There'll be no more goodbyes. He will wipe our tears away and we will worship him for all of eternity. And there'll be nothing greater because that's what we were created to do. And that's what will last forever. He is so worthy. And as this song says, he is worthy of it all.
sat by that hospital bed You were worthy And she could barely lift her head You were worthy After all those tears were shed You were worthy I'll never stop singing your praise I'll never stop singing your praise And in the blessing and the pain You are worthy Whether you say yes or no or wait You are worthy Through it all I choose to say You are worthy I'll never stop singing your praise going through life without the comfort and the hope and the strength that he gives. Because you know, the truth is, we all have different backgrounds. We all have different stories. But we all have one thing in common. And that is we need God. Without him, we're lost. But with him, we have everything for everything we face. My dad and I, we saw that so much in that horrible journey that we went through. But we saw God working every step of the way. I'll never forget, um, my dad and I would go to all of my mom's doctor's appointments and honestly, I kind of dreaded them because they would always give these cognitive assessments and I just knew she was never gonna get anything right on those questions and she didn't even know where she was, uh, what time of day it was, or even who we were. How was she gonna count from 100 by sevens? backwards. I mean, I can't even hardly do that. So I just always dreaded it. And this one particular day, the doctor said, okay, so I want you to write a sentence. You're going to write a sentence with a subject and a verb and punctuation. And I just thought, what in the world? And I just kind of looked down and I just felt so bad for my mom because I just knew she wouldn't be able to do it. But she was all smiles and she took the piece of paper and she scribbled something down on it and handed it back to the doctor all proud of herself. 
and I'll never forget it. The doctor looked at the piece of paper and paused for quite a while. And when she looked up, she had tears in her eyes and she turned the piece of paper around so we could see it. And it said, Jesus saves with an explanation point. She had the subject, the verb, and the punctuation. But in that moment, I realized that that horrible disease could take so much away from her. It took almost everything, stripped her of everything. But the one thing it couldn't touch was her love for Jesus and her desire to tell people the hope that is found in him and that Jesus saves. Because there is healing in his name. There is hope. There is peace. And as this song says, there is power in the name of Jesus. starts to break declaring there is hope and there is freedom I speak Jesus your name is power your name is healing your name is life break every stronghold shine through the shadows burn like a fire I just want
wanna speak the name of Jesus Over every heart and every mind Cause I know there is peace within your presence I speak Jesus I'm so thankful for Jesus and the difference he's made in my life. You know, we've shared a lot of things tonight. We've talked about a lot of things, sung a lot of things. And, and we just want to, in our final moments together, just take a moment and just give you an opportunity to maybe process a little bit of what we've shared. First of all, I don't think it's a mistake that you're here tonight. And I don't think it's a mistake that we are either. God planned this moment for each of us to be here. We'll never have this moment again where all of us here are together at the same exact time. And we want you to know we've been praying for each of you. We don't know your names and we don't know all the details in your life, but God does. And when we leave, we're gonna continue to pray for you. And to help us know how we can pray for you, I'm gonna ask a couple of questions. And if you wouldn't mind just bowing your heads and closing your eyes, I don't want to embarrass, I'm not going to embarrass anyone, I'm not going to come up to you, I'm not going to point you out, I'm not going to do anything, but just pray for you right now and give you a moment in the quietness of this moment to just search your heart and see what God might be saying to you tonight. Maybe you're here tonight and, and you've heard me talking about this relationship that I have with God that is so real and so personal. And maybe you can't say the same about your life. Maybe you've been a good person, you've tried to do all the right things, maybe you've gone to church, maybe you haven't gone to church, that's not what it's about. The question is, do you have a personal relationship with Jesus? And if something were to happen to you tonight, do you know beyond a shadow of a doubt that you would spend eternity in heaven with Jesus? It's the most important decision you could ever make. And I have to say that I am very sure that that day my brother woke up. I never, I'm sure he never dreamed it was gonna be his last day on earth because none of us do. But we need to know where we stand with God. We need to know that we have a relationship with him. So if you're here tonight without anybody looking around and, and you're not sure and you'd say, Paula, I'm not sure that I would spend heaven, I would spend eternity in heaven would you pray for me if there's anyone here like that tonight? Would you just slip your hand up real quick? And again, I'm not going to point you out or embarrass you. I'm just going to pray for you. Is there anyone tonight that would say, Paula, would you pray for me? It's the most important decision you could ever make. And it determines where you spend eternity. Maybe you'd say, Paula, I do know the Lord, but God's been kind of speaking to my heart tonight. Maybe things have gotten a little cold or a little distant and Maybe you'd like me to pray for you for that. Yeah, I see some hands. Yeah, anyone else? Would you pray for me? Yes. Maybe you'd say, Paula, you shared all that you have gone through lately with your family and different struggles and challenges, and maybe you're going through something tonight. And you need God to help you in a way that only he can. If you're going through something tonight and I can pray for you, would you just raise your hand up real quick? I will. Yes. Yes. A lot of hands. Yes. Yes. Lord Jesus, thank you for this time that we could be here tonight and we could worship you and we could celebrate what you've done. But God, I thank you for each person that took the time to come and share this evening. And God, for those that are here tonight, if there's anyone, Lord, that's not sure of where they stand with you and wants to be sure. I pray, Lord, that in the quietness of this moment and in the quietness of their heart, they could pray something like this. Lord Jesus, I know that I'm a sinner. I believe that you came and died on the cross to pay for my sin. Please forgive me and come into my life and be my savior. Help me to live for you for this day forward. God, if there's anyone that prayed that prayer, I just pray, Lord, that you'll just wrap your arms of love around them, that they will feel your power and presence like never before, 
and that they will share this decision with someone. Because you tell us, when just one person comes to know you, all of heaven rejoices. There's a celebration. So God, I just ask you to work in hearts. Lord, if there's those that are hurting tonight, God, you know every need in this room. You know every heavy heart. And just like you have been so faithful to me, God, I pray that you will be faithful to each person here and minister to them and help them and give them that hope and that healing that we just sang about, God, because that's what you do. You are a faithful, amazing God who will work and do the miraculous in our lives when we look to you. And God, for the rest of us, help us, Lord, just to leave here just more excited about you, just ready to tell others about you and the difference you've made in our lives, God. Help us to realize this life here is so short. So help us to be a light. Let's share God's love. And let's just be a witness, Lord, to those around us. And so that we can make an impact for you for all of eternity. Lord, thank you so much for meeting with us. You say where two or three are gathered in your name. There you are in the midst. God, we know you're here tonight. And we just thank you for meeting with us. And we ask this all in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, we have one more song to sing, and we just want to thank you so much for coming and sharing in this evening with us. It has meant the world to us. And we have a few people we want to thank real quick. Um, we want to thank Pastor Jonathan for allowing us this incredible privilege. This, I'm going to try not to cry. I think I've done really well tonight because usually I can, <laughs> I can get a little emotional. But this really is a privilege and an honor. And to be here full circle and have my daughter here and, and my dad and just all these things, it's like, it's, it's amazing. So thank you, Pastor Jonathan, for allowing us. Thank you, Scott Bowman, our worship leader, for just also having us and just putting this together. We could not have done it without him. And his assistants, Abby and Andy, they're here somewhere. And they did a lot of the detail work, which we are so grateful for. Elisha back at the soundboard, Greg back at the monitors. We've got the camera guys, we got the lights. I mean, I could go on and on. I'm afraid I'm gonna miss someone, but we are so grateful for everyone who took part in this evening. Um, also thankful for Debbie Struble who put together our little reception next door. We hope you'll come help us. We have a lot of cupcakes <laughs> and we really need your help. And we'll be over there, M and I, so we'd love to talk to you, take pictures with your kids or whatever you wanna do, we'll be there. And again, we thank the choir for singing with us. My friends, thank you. And the band, weren't they great tonight? And I wanna thank my husband. This is where I'll get emotional too, but we just know that he believes in our ministry and supports us and we couldn't have done this without him. So thank you, hon. And so we're gonna close with this last song. This is one of my favorites because it sends us out with a challenge to go be a light to go be a witness, go share your story, what God has done, and see how it can impact your family, the city, and even our world that so desperately needs the Lord. your face.
said thanks to all of the others on the stage, but I think we need to say thank you to Emma and Paula for your faithfulness and for using your talents, your gifts for God. There's no question that we've been blessed tonight. We're blessed all the time with you guys, but I know there are a lot of churches all across the country that are blessed every single year when they're going out and ministering in person, and they do all of that, and, you know, it's, it's a labor of love. It's a lot of work. And, of course, Emma loves to skip school. I know that. But other than that, it's a difficult thing to do. And so, uh, you know, when in a moment when we're finished up here, Paul and Emma are going to go over, and they're going to be over in Bruner Hall, just out the doors to the side there. And their brand-new album is there. And I want to encourage you, yes, there's 800 cupcakes. And for every CD you buy, you get a free cupcake. I think that's the way it works. Actually, the cupcakes are free regardless. But I want to encourage you, like, go ahead and buy everything they have. And here's why. Every dollar will go to ministry. Paula has the opportunity. And a couple of years ago, I had the opportunity of going uh, with Paula up to Bangor, Maine. I preached at the church that she grew up in. And it was kind of weird for me, kind of cool, because when I was there, I had the opportunity of preaching that night. Paula was doing the music. And the preacher actually told me, he said, now we've given you about 15 minutes because our people really want to hear from Paula. <laughs> so I got to preach quick. She got to sing long. They really love her. But I do know this. Every single time that she has the opportunity of going out and ministering to those churches, man, there are people who are absolutely overwhelmed and blessed by the power of the gospel and the power of hope. 
and that Paula shared that tonight in the hope that her story brings of all that she's been through and the faithfulness that God has exhibited to her. And that's a message we all need to hear. And so every dollar that goes when you buy those CDs, it doesn't go so that, uh, you know, when she turns 16 in a couple of weeks to buy a new car, that's Rob's job, that's Rob's problem. It goes to ministry, it goes to help them go out and to minister to people around the country. And so I wanna encourage you to buy every one of those CDs. And so I do want to thank you for coming out tonight. I want to say thank you to TJ and to Gary and to Scott and David. Thank you for being here tonight and, and blessing us as well. Let's just pray, and then we will, uh, we will end our night and celebrate next door with cupcakes and music. Sounds like a good thing, right? All right, let's pray. Father, we thank you tonight for the opportunity that we have to continue today in lifting up your name because you're the only one that's worthy. God, we have had the opportunity today to... Uh, Lord, spend time in worship, to spend time in your word. We've had the opportunity today to spend time in giving and serving and fellowship. And God, that's exactly what you have designed and desired for each and every one of us. And so we're grateful for it. And God, I pray that tonight, Lord, as we've had the opportunity of hearing these songs and all of them point our hearts directly to you, God, we are so grateful that the words of these songs are not just words. They are truly a testament to your faithfulness, to your love, and to the gift of your son, Jesus, without whom we would have no hope whatsoever. But because you loved us and you gave, he came and he died and he rose again. And as a result of that great gift, that we can face any problem, any issue, any hurdle, any challenge, no matter how difficult it might seem, that we can face those moments with joy and peace and contentment and hope because, God, you are on your throne and worthy to be praised. And, God, for that, we give you the praise. We give you the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So let's head next door, get some cupcakes, and have some fellowship.